I am Sonali Kusum, an advocate professor at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. See, surrogacy has been legalized in India since 2002. It has been permitted. However, formally it has been legalized by Supreme Court judgment of Baby Manaji case, Baby Manaji Amanda of 2008, wherein the Supreme Court allowed surrogacy to be practiced both in commercial form as well as for the Indians as well as for foreigners. So, surrogacy then on has been practiced. However, there has been series of legal developments on surrogacy, but as of now till date, so far there has not been any statutory binding act on surrogacy. We have series of bills which are being drafted towards the formalization of an act on surrogacy. We have had in the process of making the act, we have had medical guidelines from formulated by Indian Council of Medical Research Delhi. It is secondly that has been backed up with a bill again which is called Assisted Reproductive Technologies Bill 2008. This bill has been revised twice or thrice. It has been revised in the year uh, 2010 beginning with the 2008 draft of Assisted Reproductive Technologies Bill. It has been revised in 2010 as ART bill again. Then again the same bill with some more revisions and consultation with the stakeholders involved with the civil society in order to make the bill much more effective and better. They have again revised it in the year 2014 which is again a Assisted Reproductive Technologies Bill 2014. And now we have another series of bill which is called Surrogacy Regulation Bill 2016 which has been formulated by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare as well as it has been content has been drafted largely by a group of ministers constituted by the Prime Minister's office with eminent persons involved in the same. As of now again the bill is being drafted, formulated, a series of changes are being made in the bill but it has not yet taken the shape of an act. And I would like to add one more thing, there is a proposal by the government that they will bifurcate the surrogacy bill and ART bill into two separate bills. The ART bill will be looking at the IVF and other medical procedures and the surrogacy bill will be centrally focusing on the practice conduct of surrogacy and the regulations concerning the stakeholders in surrogacy which is surrogate mother, child and the couples. However, this proposal is being contested because surrogacy largely depends on the ART because surrogacy, no surrogacy is possible without the use of ART technologies, without the use of donors, gametes, storage, treatment. So, how far the separation of the two bill is possible and how far both the bills can independently function, that is another issue. The surrogacy bill has been approved by parliament. It has been referred to the Rajya Sabha Standing Committee on Health and Family Welfare. The Rajya Sabha Standing Committee is making an intensive study on the same and it is supposed to submit the report soon. Uh, meanwhile, the Rajya Sabha Standing Committee has also uh, consulted stakeholders, civil society, experts in the field, lawyers, uh, medical practitioners, social workers and uh, literary scholars on the same to present their suggestions. The bill has already been placed in the public domain and the suggestions and comments have been invited for the same. As of now, as per the Surrogacy Regulation Bill 2016, the bill proposes to legalize domestic surrogacy by confining it only to the permissible uh, couples who are uh, Indian, national Indian citizens and it does not allow even the unmarried single Indian nationals, Indian citizens to commission surrogacy. There is a doubt with respect to also the status of uh, such single individuals who are ever married, let's say about the widow divorcees, if they are being Indian citizens, if they are permitted to commission surrogacy, it is doubtful, it is not addressed in the bill. At the same time, the bill completely excludes uh, foreigners, foreign nationals, foreign citizens, as well as the NRI, OCI, overseas citizens of India, persons of Indian origins, all those persons are also excluded to commission surrogacy in India if the bill has to take effect in the present form. As per the bill, there are a series of procedural compliances which are laid down. There are a set of preconditions which any Indian citizen, Indian intending couple who are required to be first heterosexually married, they have to be married to a woman, the marriage has to be valid as per the Indian laws, that means the marriage has to be registered. Secondly, the bill requires them to be infertile and there has to be a test conducted of infertility and a report submitted. This test report has to be obtained and a certificate to this effect has to be obtained from the concerned registered medical practitioners. 
also the bill prescribes as one of the preconditions that the concerning couple who seeks to commission surrogacy should not have had prior child either through normal course or through surrogacy or through adoption so the bill writes childlessness is one of the criteria again the bill says that this this condition itself however is strongly contested because there is no law in india supporting one child norm and this condition is also very arbitrary and discriminatory against the infertile couples because only the infertile couples are required to be prior childless but it is not applicable to the other couples who are seeking to commission surrogacy who may be fertile so this is very discriminatory secondly since there is no one child norm in india so having a law which states that you have to be prior childless is totally without any rational or without any logic of law another condition is the couple is required to bring their own close family relative to be surrogate mother now this is again a very arbitrary and a vague provision because the bill does not describe or define who is a close family relative however the bill says that there has to be a genetic connection between the couple and the close family relative now in many conditions that we know in genetic diseases or let's say for example cancer there is particular necessity that the same family relative should not act as surrogate because there is a risk of passing on the same health infirmities to the child so this is not addressed secondly a close family relative we do not know who it could be sister sister in law and why should they be surrogate mother and it is very unlikely that a certain surrogate a certain woman in the close family relative circuit will be available to be surrogate for a infertile couple because it's the lady who is required to have had a earlier child she is required to be of certain age with all these given conditions there is possibility maybe in one in 90 or 99% of the cases that mostly 99% of the cases it will not be available so there is only 1% chance so you are basically leaving the medically infertile couple to you know the luck and dependency and there is very uns- huge amount of uncertainty involved in this again another condition is they are required to obtain a certificate from an appropriate authority which is constituted under the bill so that to say that they have complied with all the conditions in addition to this there are other conditions which may be proposed but these are some of the major conditions which they have to follow in order to commission surrogacy and of course having said that it is also implied that since we are saying heterosexually married couple and childless infertile couple it is also said that single unmarried widow divorcee as well as uh, single uh, let's say same sex live in partners are completely excluded being indian or foreigners they are completely excluded to commission surrogacy in india i would like to say under this bill they have proposed a new form of establishing parentage for the couples who is commissioning surrogacy over the child that is that they are requ- the couple is required to obtain an order from the magistrate saying uh, a parentage custody order but to establish that they are the concerned parents of the child but there are many lacunas in this provisions firstly to begin with we do not know whether to obtain this order at the time of pregnancy or after the delivery and after the birth of the child so we do not know whether it is a pre birth order or post birth order because this is a proposal which is taken from the foreign countries let's say in uk in california in usa they have this system of pre birth order and post birth court order but in india it is not clear either it is pre birth or post birth secondly we do not know what is the maximum time limit under which this order can be issued by the this order is required to be issued by the court of magistrate of first class but then we do not know if after the birth of the child if it is taking one year or two year or three year or six months and again we do not know if this order is a final or if this order is refused where the couple should go should the couple go appeal to the courts we, does a chance stand this is not provided so this provision needs some more uh, clarity and description as to how the parentage has to be established another issue is there is no provision stating that there has to be necessity genetic connection between either of the couple and the child so uh, if the child can be showed to be genetically connected to the couple either couple both the couple through dna test that is not provided if that is applicable in this condition i would like to add one more uh, legal impediment in establishing parentage for the couple over the child that is under the present existing law till the time the surrogacy bill does not become an act right now under the existing law we have indian evidence act 
as well as we have birth registration act in india which provides that the birthing mother the woman who gives birth is presumed as the mother of the child accordingly in the birth certificate also the mother who's giving birth her name is registered in the hospital as a mother so under such circumstances and legal condition till there is an amendment in certain form to the bill and there is some kind of a consistency brought in this there will be there is possibility there is a likelihood of possibility of uh, custody suits between the surrogate mother and the couple this has been the case in many other foreign countries as well this bill is primarily based on two criteria basically to limit surrogacy to make it into altruistic form basically confining surrogacy into a more altruistic and familial surrogacy arrangement where this, there is no money involved monetary compensation involved to the surrogate mother monetary compensation is allowed to the surrogate mother under this bill but only insurance and medical expenses and second thing the bill confines it among the family relatives that the couple and the surrogate mother has to be close family relatives secondly there is no uh, surrogacy agreement also provided in the bill so this is the present uh, form and the objective of the bill but however the bill completely lacks the right based perspective for the stakeholders involved in the surrogacy bill there is no legal protection of interest provided to the surrogate mother to the child born of surrogacy as well as the couple let's begin with the child the child born of surrogacy the very first legal protection which is the basic legal protection afforded to every child in india which is the breastfeeding that has not been included in the bill there secondly coming to the safeguards provided for the couple as well as the child there is no provision in the bill on the birth certificate of the child to be issued there is a provision as far as the parentage has to be established through the order of the magistrate court but there is no provision as to how the birth certificate has to be issued to the child born of surrogacy and i think this is very important if for the child's right to custody parentage as well as for the couple again going back to the issues of the couple there is no provision in the bill where if the clinic has some kind of switching or mixing up of the gametes or embryos in the clinic there have been many cases in india as well as in foreign countries where the couples are coming to the clinic they are donating their gametes or embryos are preserved over a period of years before the surrogacy actually takes place and then in that period sometimes there have been cases where there have been a uh, mix up and switching of the gametes and embryos and resulting in the fact that the couple one of the child is genetically related to the couple and one of the child is not so there have been cases where the child has been detained in india passports have not been issued for them as well as there one or two cases have been in the courts also in the indian court one of the cases uh, kerala high court has issued even compensation for one of the lady who was the commissioning mother she is in this is a case of a domestic surrogacy so these are some of the areas where legal safeguards are not been provided another issue is there have been no background check or screening of the couple who is coming to commission surrogacy not just for foreigners but even for indians what is the background what is the criminal background let's say in foreign countries like australia they are even conducting a police background check or in india let's say in adoption we have so many protocols to check the background of the couple socio economic educational familial that has not been provided this is some of the safeguards which should have protected the interest but this is missing now coming back to the interest of surrogate mother there is hardly any reproductive health safeguards provided let's say there is only insurance for the surrogate mother but there is no post delivery care there is no counseling informed counseling before the consent takes place counseling when, when we mean counseling we need to provide comprehensive counseling not just medical counseling but also psychosocial counseling as to what will be the impact during the course of pregnancy post pregnancy what is the legal counseling has to be done as to what could be the repercussions of entering into surrogacy arrangements what should be the legal status now recently there is a trend that a child care leave is being provided to the mother who is commissioning surrogacy but it is not yet included in the bill that the similar safeguard should be included for both the surrogate mother as well as the intending mother so these are some of the crucial safeguards which are missing in the bill having said that there are many other loopholes which are absent in the bill the there are a series of uh, criminal sanctions and penal punishments which are provided in the bill uh, having said that it appears that the bill for the first time makes criminalization of reproductive choices because surrogacy as such is not a criminal illegal act it has been existing from time immemorial in india that surrogacy has been taking place but among the family relatives now this bill for the first time imposes criminal sanctions on the couple on the surrogate mother as well as on a series of other stakeholders like intermediaries as well as the doctors clinic and the clinic practitioners now the bill 
strongly imposes uh, prohibition and penal sanctions in up to uh, jail term of 10 years and fine up to 50,000 rupees, which is as close to a uh, stringent penalty in given in case of rape and stringent criminal offences that has been put in surrogacy bill. This is questionable because considering the background and the context where it is the criminal sanction is used, what is the purpose for which criminal sanction is used, the term and the quantum of punishment is questionable. The bill imposes uh, punishment of jail term and fine on the couples and the surrogate mothers, doctors, practitioners for co commissioning commercial surrogacy, wherein the surrogate mother should not be paid more than medical expenses, more than insurance. Only two heads of expenditures are possible. So, for any other expenditure, if you are given to the surrogate mother, then such surrogacy will be deemed as commercial and that is punishable with jail term. But having said that, it has to be relooked because if such a punishment is provided in India, we are not addressing the question what if an Indian heterosexually married couple commissions commercial surrogacy in foreign country considering it is a ban here. Secondly, the bill on many aspects of the misuse of technology is not addressed as punishment. Sex selective surrogacy considering India has a very high rate of sex selections issues and the low sex ratio in many states there are crises in that. But there is no prohibition on the sex selective surrogacy, there is no prohibition on use of uh, PGD for sex selective purposes, there is no prohibition on using two surrogate mothers at the same time, there is no prohibition on movement of surrogate mothers by the couple to foreign countries for the purpose of surrogacy. The bill uses many a times the provision of exploitation of surrogate mothers and the child but does not define what is exploitation. Does it cover trafficking? Does it cover abduction? Those things have not been defined. So major misuse and offences are left unaddressed in the bill.